Hello and welcome to Keep Bright on a Birmingham City podcast brought to you by us here at Birmingham Live. I'm Brian Dick and I'm joined as ever by our Blues reporter Alex Dickin and we've dedicated this whole episode to your takes and questions. There were so many after the Middlesbrough game on Tuesday night that we thought rather than cram into an hour and a half mine and Alex's musings and, and, and then yours at the end we'd actually dedicate a, an, enti- an entire um, episode, as I say, an entire episode to, uh, to, to your thoughts, um, the people that matter most and the people who were pretty unhappy after the uh, no-show against Middlesbrough. So, hi Alex, should we, uh, should we just go straight into the, uh, to the takes? Yeah, yeah, I think that's the best way. Do you want me to go first? I'll go... Um, yeah, you lead yeah. them off, yeah. 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 John John Gull, uh, regular listener um, and contributor with takes. This team looks like it's sleepwalking into League One. Can't see how we amass enough points to survive. What a tragedy this season has become. John's read my mind there. That's exactly what I've been thinking in the last 24, 48 hours um, when I've been trying to sleep, thinking about Birmingham City at nights. Um, it has become a bit of a shambles, hasn't it, Brian? You know, I think... Before the game on Tuesday, you mentioned, you know, to me about when we think about all the things in this season, you know, it all does date back to that decision early October when when John Eustis was probably unnecessarily sacked at a time where Birmingham City were doing quite well. Blues went went looking for for trouble when there was no need. Um, because you know, inevitably trouble finds you in the championship and it really has found blues now. Um, you know. The defeat to middles that's four in five 21st in the championship one point of the relegation zone probably need to beat watford on saturday or at least draw to not be in the relegation zone for the international break um how the hell has this happened brian oh <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. how long have we got um <laughs> yeah i mean it starts it, it does start with the decision to change tack um not away from Eustace in November in October sorry change tack to Rooney and then obviously there was there was no other option but to change again from from Rooney to Mowbray I think if you go from Eustace to Mowbray I know we discussed this at length before if you go from Eustace to Mowbray you can at least see some footballing sense Mm. for that decision um said at the time going from Eustace to Rooney didn't make any footballing in sense because Rooney didn't have a track record of doing what the Blues owners wanted him to do. Mowbray arguably did, but then Mowbray wasn't necessarily a name that you could sell around the world, which we know is an important part of, of Knighthead's agenda. So I, I, I suppose, you know, looking at, at, at the, the macro picture or the bigger picture there, it's a, it seems to be a question of the corporate and commercial um, agenda, mm. not marrying not marrying up with the practicalities of organising and running a football team to stay in the championship and get out of the championships championship through the right exit and you know not the not the back door. Um, so that that's how it's come to this. Um, sleepwalking to relegation. I mean, I wouldn't have said that after the after the Ipswich game, particularly. I thought there was a little bit of fight against Ipswich. I thought there was mm. a lot of fight against Southampton. Mm. Um, you know, Blues got involved in a basketball match with a team that probably you shouldn't be getting involved with a basketball match against, but they did, and they scored three goals, and then they were undone um, with that with that late winner. Hull, I mean, listen, Hull wasn't great, was it? But you know, you could. At least they, again, they. I thought they showed fight at Hull to 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 come back and and score an equaliser. Uh, but then you 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 get the games against Millwall and Middlesbrough, which is the game in hand, and you know the promised game in hand, which is supposed to yield the points to 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 um, assuage everyone's fears, and and just had two non performances really. Mm. Um, so I can see why John has used that phrase. Uh, certainly. The prospect of going into League One is very, very real, given what we've seen in those last two matches. 
And if, if we look at Blues on, on 39 points, everyone says the Magic tops 50, don't they? To, to secure championship safety. In recent years, to be fair, it has been a little bit a little bit under that. Teams have stayed up on, on 45, 47. Um, but this year very much feels like a 50 season, doesn't it, Brian, I think? With the amount of teams down there, the amount of teams down there picking up points when you look at Sheffield Wednesday and QPR in particular. Um, I think it probably is going to take three more wins and, a, and some draws as well for Blues to get over the line from these remaining nine games. Um, do you... I don't want to put you on the spot, Brian, but do you think they've got enough? Do you think Blues have got enough to to see this through now? Okay, on, on the evidence of, of Millwall and Middlesbrough, then I have serious doubts. You know, mm. you put me on the spot, I, I, I'm not going to just say yes, they have got enough because yeah. I, I'd, be, I'd be lying if I didn't I didn't have doubts after after Tuesday night. I have got doubts. Um, listen, if they play like that for the next nine games, then I don't think they are staying in the division mm-hmm. um if they can make certain tactical changes which you know would give them in my opinion a, a better a better chance of staying up uh and you know like we said in, in a previous episode like maybe you know go having lucas Djukovic as the, as the go-to guy mm. if, if they can if they can heed john ruddy's words and and you know all pull together and and uh, you know Listen to the, the 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 hard home truths that were supposedly um, dished out after in the dressing room after the Millwall game. Then then yes, if they can respond and and dig in and you know show show some some fight and some leadership, then yes, they can get out of it. And there are games that I look in those next nine games, and I think yeah, okay, I you know maybe one or potentially even three points there. So yeah, it's it's not. It's not all gone, but we need to see more than we saw on Tuesday night. Definitely, mm, agreed. Uh, a, di- a slightly different different take here from uh, from Long Long Road. Can we talk about how toxic it feels in the ground? People screaming and groaning when it's not hoofed up the pitch. I get the anxiety in the stadium, but it's blatantly feeding onto the pitch. The players were terrified against Middlesbrough. No player is going to thrive in that environment. Um, I thought the atmosphere was quite flat against Middlesbrough, to be honest. And I, I could, I could sense the frustration in the second half, particularly late on, as Blues fans could see the game getting away from them. You know, with things like Janino Bakuna trying to take a touch at when the ball's forty coming fifty yards out, fifty meters out the sky, when he could have just let it go out for a throw in and gone from there. He took the risk and ended up losing the throw in. Um, and with with some of the the choice of of set piece of a free kick delivery late on, um, I could understand the frustration. Um, I think I think it's it's been it's been difficult for uh, you know in recent weeks in the recent games, um, both home and away. I think the atmosphere against Southampton was quite good. Really, it was it was you know even after the game, Blues fans could appreciate the efforts the players had put in. There have been other. I suppose toxic situations this season when you think that's a hull at home in Wayne Rooney's first game, but you can understand it around that. Um, you know, the 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 ticket deal that Knight had put on for the for the two fixtures this week probably didn't quite work. I think the, the attendance was just shy of eighteen thousand. So, you know, we're probably not expecting a massive attendance against against Watford on um on Saturday either. And again, you know, that's understandable because you know, we even with with new owners, you can't expect fans who've been mistreated and treated to rubbish football for the last you know decade or whatever to to come back when they can't see tangible tangible change on the field. And that hasn't been the case this season. We haven't seen great improvements on the field. If anything, Blues have regressed on where they were at this time last year. Um. So. Bro, I'm not sure if you've got any any other overriding emotions on the on the atmosphere inside St Andrews. It's been it's been an issue all season in terms of trying to get people in the stadium. But like I've just said, you're not going to do that without better results, are you? No. So somebody actually said to me in the press box on Tuesday night. He said, "Does it feel anxious in here?" And this was about 15 minutes in, and and mm. it did it did feel anxious. I, d- I don't know if I'd go as far as toxic, but mm. you know, if if that's long long roads um, experience then I'm not going to question that. But to me, 
it feels anxious. Uh, mm. You know, I, I, I think the playing style does does feed into that a little bit. Yeah. You know, within within two minutes, Mark Roberts had under hit a back pass to John Ruddy, and suddenly, you know, nerves were jangling, weren't they? And and it does transmit from the crowd to the players, or from the players to the crowd. I think potentially even an element of of that on on Tuesday night. Um, there's a, there's an anxiety, uh, and you, you know, Blues supporters are not used to seeing their team try and play their way up the field and it comes mm. it comes you know i understand the nerves about that because it's not working is it you know that the, we'll come on to it in a, in a little bit the, the it's not producing chances at the moment and it is taking risks which appear to be which which are um, against Middlesbrough, you know, Blues Pritchard tried to play out, got caught, and Blues conceded the goal. So playing out is causing a risk, which is costing them as well. So it's it's the, it's the risk without the reward at the moment, and that's leading to the anxiety. Um, yeah. That said, I'd rather be playing at home than away from home. Um, I, yeah, I just would. over a hundred percent. It been played. You don't want Blues to be playing away from home at the moment, dear good God. Um, what is it? Three three wins on the road all season. Um, mm. under three different managers yeah I, I you know that's that's what concerns me greatly going into those those big fixtures towards the end of the season against against Rotherham who Blue should be beating against QPR after the international break and against Huddersfield they're all away from home that's a big big concern for me uh, because Blues haven't looked like winning many games away from home this season you know they often just roll over and, and lose um go, going going back to back to the Back to the atmosphere at St Andrews and and the point that that Long Long Road has made has made. Um, do you th- do you think Brian people would be more comfortable if if it was more direct and and Lukas Djukovic was up front and they were going long eight out of ten times? I think they probably wouldn't playing for scraps. I think I think fans would probably be more at ease with that rather than the ball being rolled around just outside their own box, knowing that you know Blues are liable to be punished. I think they're more comfortable if they see goal scoring chances coming coming, aren't they? Mm-hmm. I, I think it's the the absolute lack of threat on on Middlesbrough's goal the other night. You know that that's also what what increases anxiety because it means if you're not threatening their goal, you only have to make one mistake at the back and 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 you're yeah. you're, you're there's another game gone. If if the ball is up the other in the air on its way to Djukovic. Then there is less risk, less risk of making a mistake at the back, isn't isn't there? You know, it's the yeah, it's 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 just it is what it is. I'm afraid, you know, it's a, it, it's a truth. Um, we, we're coming across as absolute footballing luddites here, aren't, aren't we? This this is a situation that that Blues find themselves in, and I just don't know whether they can play their way out of it. Um, yeah. You know, the one goal they've scored in the last three games has come from a ball ball out wide into, into Djukovic. And I just, just the, what they were trying to do on Tuesday night was get, get the ball into wide positions and then somehow pick out Jay Stansfield against three centre backs. That yeah. just that just wasn't working, was it? You know, so. Go on. I, th- I, th- I think, you know, five minutes into the game, you, you said to me, you know, where are the patterns of play? What are they trying to do? And I think that's been missing in the last two games, especially actually the last three, because I don't think they were that good against Hull, to be honest. I, I think they were very fortunate to get out of there with a the point. But if you look at the last three games, those attacking patterns haven't quite been there. I think the goal they scored at, at Hull was quite nice in the link-up play between Hall and Pritchard on the cross. And obviously that's a bit of an old-school goal with Djukovic scoring the header. But the last two, there haven't really been many patterns of play, especially against Middlesbrough. There was, there was nothing going forward. You know, during the whole ninety-eight minutes, and you know, I've just been just been looking at the fixtures. The last nine games Blues have played, they've only scored two goals or more in two of those matches. So Blues are invariably scoring one goal or not scoring at all, and that's that's as you pointed out to me. And I hate to give you all the good the good uh, the good feedback on these points, but you know, if you're only really going to score one goal a game, and that's that's what Blues, you know. That's what stats say they are going to do. You know, you can't concede, and Blues always concede. They've kept seven clean sheets this season. They always concede. So, 
even in some of the games they didn't concede against Rotherham, they should have conceded. So, you know, you can't rely on Blues to keep a clean sheet and you can't rely on them, them to score more than once. That's a real recipe for disaster. Yeah, which brings us on to, to a couple of questions. Um, one from Ziggich Legend 19 How concerned are you about the drying up of attempts on goal? We averaged around 15 a game under Tony Mowbray into the last three games. Um, it's indicative of the evaporation of belief, in my opinion. What can we do to try and revigorate them? Uh, so just before I'll let you field that one, just to put some stats behind that point, um, there, were 90, there were nine attempts on goal against Borough and, and zero on target. Against Millwall, there were 16 and only one on target. Against Hull, there were eight and three on target. So then, then certainly the number of on-target attempts has gone through the gone through the floor, isn't it? Um, yeah. What are the reasons there? And I think I think we've discussed before what the potential remedy is. I'm I'm massively concerned about this. Um, and I remember speaking to Tony Mowbray after the defeat at Sheffield Wednesday, and Blues were just kind of teetering above the the bottom three at that at that stage, and. I asked him, you know, do you think you're in a relegation scrap? And he was absolutely adamant that they weren't because, you know, he could see the chances and the shots they were having. Um, and they, the shots have now dried up. I, I have a real kind of um, a thing about managers talking about we've had 25 shots and, you know, whatever. And a lot of managers in the Championship do do it. Wayne Rooney did it sometimes and Tony Mowbray has done it. And, you know, you look at the quality of those shots that the Blues are having. You know, I'm not classing Lee Buchanan winning the ball 30 yards out and deciding to, to chance his arm as a as a chance. That's not a chance. Lee Buchanan scored two goals his entire career. He He's not looked like scoring a goal for Blues when he's done that this season. So, you know, there are chances and then there are chances and Blues aren't creating chances, like good chances. And... Against Millwall, they had a couple. One which was very fortunate in that Stansfield, the ball was deflected back, come back to him, and he should have scored. And there was one good chance they created not long after that where Buchanan crossed and Miyoshi should have hit the target. But other than that, in the last two games, probably last three games, if you take out that that in the whole game as well, they've, they've created very little. They've done very little to work the opposition goalkeeper. And that's it's got it's got to stop. I, I think there are two two remedies to it. The first, as we've spoken about at length, is is being a little bit more direct and having that focal point in Lukas Djukovic. And he is their only option if you want to do that. Because if you want to, you know, Scott Hogan, he's probably still of a similar type to Stansfield in that he's more of a presser. He's not going to give you that aerial threat that Djukovic provides. And the other for me is to add some pace to that attack. You know, the one thing I looked at, and when I looked at the starting 11 against Middlesbrough, the front four, I thought there's, there's no pace there. You know, you've taken Bakuna out, who's probably your, your second fastest attacker after after George Hall. Um, I know they've been airing on the side of caution with George Hall and his is him coming back from the hamstring injuries. But he's he's looked he has looked very dangerous when he's come on in recent games. And I do think after the international break, if things don't improve, I would like to see George Hall in the starting eleven purely for that pace, because I think it gives Blue so much more. We we've not got a player who can go in behind. That's a, that's a major issue for me. Um, I think those two are the things I'd like to see more of: more pace and also the, the physical threat. It's neither have been there in, in the last the last two matches. So we're we looking at a four-two-three-one with you know with a double yeah. pivot, whoever that might be, and and Bakuna who's got a bit of pace, and Hall's got who's got a bit of pace, and and actually Stansfield's quite Stansfield. quick. Stansfield, yeah, yeah, you know when he when he's not trying to battle his way past you know three giants. Uh, with with Djukovic as, as as the focal point, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, all, it does. albeit, albeit as as we've said before, people are still pointing out this is twenty twenty four, and we're still looking at Duke. So, but, yeah, uh, pay, pay, pace certainly away from home. If if teams are going to come on, then you absolutely need pace. And and the side that started against against Middlesbrough was a bit ploddy, wasn't it? It was. It was. Yeah. And I mean, the, the Laird, Duke Laird aside, I suppose. Sorry. Yeah, the the Djukovic, the Djukovic argument. I can understand why why you know Blues fans are thinking we're eight years down the line. We can't keep relying on this guy. But Blues haven't signed anyone who's similar who can do a better job at the moment, have they? You know, I don't want to see Stansfield battling centre backs in these final nine games. It, it's it's not it's not getting the best out of him. You know, 
I'd like to see Stansfield where I actually think he's played his best football for Blues this season. It was quite a while ago now, playing as a number 10 or, or off one of the sides. Um, you know, I, th I think he's an excellent option there and he, he's proved before that he can score goals from those positions as well. Um, Jay Stansfield's not a predatory striker. He's, he's, he's a finisher. You know, if you get him into a position outside the box or just inside the box, he can finish. He doesn't need to be in the six-yard box. Um, I think Blues would benefit from Djokovic and, and the, the three you've just named there, uh, Bakuna, Stansfield and George Hall, would give you a hell of a lot. You could still use Koji Miosh, to be honest. I think I think I don't think he's been that poor in the last two games. I think he offered quite a little, a, quite a bit of Millwall. He struggled first half against against Middlesbrough, but he was one of probably four or five players who could have been hooked at half time. I actually think Pritchard probably should have gone before Miosh. Um, yeah. I'm conscious of the fact that earlier this season, when John Eustace was playing um, playing Stansfield off the side, we were saying he needs to be playing it in, in the centre. Um, <laughs> so it, it might turn out that John Eustace actually knew, know, knows more about football than we do. Um, in fact, I'm 100% certain that's the case. Um, but, OK, we, we've maybe I've arrived to the party late and Stansfield is better from a deeper position, but it's, that is the way it looks at, at the moment. And... You could see he he benefits from having Djokovic tie up, you know, mm. a couple of a couple of centre backs, doesn't he? So, yeah, I don't know that we've necessarily found the silver bullet Ziggich legend nineteen um, to answer all of those questions, but hopefully that be interested to know what your thoughts are. Leave leave them in the in the comments section below if you uh, if you have a different route to providing more goals for the team. Mm. Um, which brings us on to uh, a, a question from Kyle Glue. Uh, is the squad divided? Looking from the outside, a large amount of players seem not to care, not enough togetherness and fight within the squad. Mm. Uh, do they have the, the the minerals? He didn't use that word for the, <laughs> for, for, for the fight. Um, Alex, what's your... your Obviously, not in the changing room, but you're you're around the tra training ground, and 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 you, you know you hear stuff. What 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 do you detect? What what are you feeling about the unity of the squad? I I've I've detected a frustration from some of the players um, towards other members of the squad in terms of you know Alex Pritchard and and John Ruddy have both given interviews in the last four or five days suggesting that you know. Everyone needs to be accountable. Everyone wants to needs to want to avoid having a relegation on their CV, whether the player is in contract going into next season, out of contract, on loan at the club at the moment. So they are, you know, re you know, they are basically saying these saying these things inside the change room is obviously, you know, telling us that as well. I have, to be honest, I have seen some some, you know frustration and needle between players in the last couple of games you can you can sense things are, are boiling over on on the field um and we know there have been frank discussions inside the dressing room from from the two players i mentioned and also mark Venus said that himself as well um you know for a squad that has you know at earlier points in the season looked very together um it does look quite disjointed at the moment and you get to this stage in a season and you sometimes start looking at players and thinking, well, what are they thinking about next season? And like we've said, you know, numerous times in, in recent weeks and on recent podcasts, a lot of these players won't be here next season, irrespective of what division Birmingham City is in. Um, and that for me, that for me is a bit of a concern because you want players playing in these final nine games that know that, that, that are directly impacted if if Birmingham City are relegated, you know that that are going to have to play in League One next year, um, or you know in the Championship if, if Blues manage to stay up. So I, I have sensed a little bit of needle, and you know, do they have the the minerals for the fight? We haven't seen that in the last two games. That's another issue. You know, we we I I've I've been you know told off by people on. On Twitter, formal, you know, Twitter or X, whatever it is now, um, for for suggesting that his squad's got you know the quality, enough quality, more than enough quality to stay up, and I, I genuinely believe it has. But I would question whether it's got the fight or the or the stomach to to stay up. And you know, 
when you look back to teams that Blues have had that have beaten relegation in the last six, six, seven years, they've always had players, leaders, you know, the likes of Harley Dean, even Christian Pedersen, you know, Kevin Long last season. Um, big voices, big personalities, players that are, you know, used to being down there and can take take responsibility. And I'm not convinced there are that many leaders in this squad. That's a big concern for me. I'd be getting, that's why I talk about Djokovic, I'd be getting them all the leaders on the pitch in these final final nine games because Blues don't have enough of them. Yeah, just to address a couple of specifics in, in Kyle's question. You know, I, I think the fact that you've made reference to them being arguments and, and disagreement, mm. disagreements, I would suggest that they do care. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I... I you can, I can't. I can't answer whether player A cares or not because I'm not inside their head, and they. Uh, and even if I was their best friend, they probably wouldn't tell me anyway. So you know, it's it's very difficult to to say this player does not care. Um, I think, I think l- being low on confidence can lo- look an awful lot like indifference. You know, mm. you, you you play within yourself. Your body language, your body language changes. Um, and you know, I, I think I, I certainly do think there's a lack of confidence now. Um, if you'd have asked this question, Kyle, two games ago after the Southampton match, I'd have said, "Well, clearly, you know, they've gone toe to toe with with Southampton there and gone right to the la- last minute and 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 battled." And it, obviously, they do care, and obviously, they do have some bottle to select the the, the the Millwall and this certainly the Middlesbrough match. Really, you, you know, they're they're the troubling ones for me. I, I think I said chilling in a previous episode, and, mm-hmm. and, I, and I was chilled by what I, what I saw on on Tuesday night. Uh, Mick, how much eff- effect is having so many players on loan and out of contract this summer having? Uh, he, he says it's stinking the place out. Um, now, you, you kind of brought that up, Alex, but John Ruddy mentioned something about this, didn't he, in, in his post match interview? Just just tell us what he said. Yeah, in the. Basically, the, obviously, we know that Blues have got a, a large number of players out of contract in um, in the in the summer. We know they've got five five loan players as well. Um, I'm just going to read a quote that that Rudy gave me, um, basically saying, "It's a reflection on you moving forward." Clubs will look at this season and say, "Right, how responsible was that individual for Birmingham's relegation?" It's on your CV and you're not going to get rid of it. None of us want that. We will be doing our utmost in the next nine games to make sure that is not the case. So, you know, that's uh, that's probably a call to arms for the, for the rest of the players, the other players inside that dressing room who are in a similar boat to Ruddy. You know, 10 of the 20 players in the squad against Middlesbrough are out of are, are under contract for next season. So the other 10 are either out of contract or going back to their, their loan clubs, their, their parent clubs. Um, as I've just said in, in the previous answer I gave, it's a bit of an issue for me. Um, I want players who, who've got something to play for going into next season. And I'm not 100%, you know, I agree with really what Rudy really said to a certain extent in that clubs will look at it and think how responsible was that player for the for a relegation. But, you know, I'm not 100% convinced that football works completely like that. You know, if other clubs will be looking at it and thinking, oh, if, if Birmingham City get relegated then we can go and nick one of their better players for, for cheaper because they're not going to be able to take him down into League One. So I think it works both ways. You would like to think that the players will have enough pride and professionalism about them to 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 give their all in these final nine games and Blues need them to. You know, when you think back to last summer, you know, July 13th, the date was when, when Blues were taken over by Knighthead. None of us envisaged that, that Blues would be in this position again you know, especially after the start to the season that Blues had. Yes, we can say some of it was self-inflicted, but even when Blues got rid of Wayne Rooney and brought Tony Mowbray in January, there was still enough time for Blues to comfortably get themselves out of this. Um, there have been a lot of obstacles, but, you know, there's no way this group of players should end up in League One. You know, it would be it would be an embarrassing thing. You know, if you look at Middlesbrough, I'm not massively impressed by their squad. I'm looking at their squad and thinking it's it's okay, but I don't think it's massively better than the best 20 players Birmingham City can put together, which shows you you know how much more this season could have amounted to if things had gone differently. Um, it's all if puts and maybes, I know, but Blues shouldn't be going down to League One, not with this group of players. 
Uh, no, indeed, I echo that entirely. Um, last one, Sam Turner has asked, when we go down, yeah. um, <laughs> uh, do, do you think the owners will reduce investment significantly? So it, it's it's still an if for me, Sam, rather than a when. You know, as as I said earlier, I don't. I think there are enough points to play for that. You know, there can be a turnaround. Um, I know Stoke City had a bit of a, uh, a dressing room set to after they lost lost a game against Cardiff. Uh, there are the, the players sort of um, dished out a few home truths to e- to each other, and that became the bottom line from from which they appear to have recovered a little bit. We know that there were some home truths spoken in the dressing room after the Middlesbrough match, and hopefully. That can be the sort of the, the watershed for for this team. Will Knight Will Knighthead reduce investment significantly? I mean, I, I would absolutely I would absolutely love to sit down with Tom Wagner and or Gary Cook to discuss their plans for this. Yeah. I'm, I, we're both speculating here, Alex. You sorry, you you you're about to say something. Then. Yeah, I am actually going to push for an interview with uh, with. Either Wagner or Cook in the next before in the next month or whatever before that open house because I do think that we we need to get their thinking on what could potentially you know what their plans are if the unthinkable does happen the Blues do drop into League One. Um, on the face of it, I look at it: an American investment firm has has bought Birmingham City and spent seventeen million estimated seventeen million on improving the infrastructure of the club. Uh, working on the the training grounds and obviously the stadium and things like that, and obviously putting money into the playing squad. Um, that's that's you know that would be a, a, a catastrophic business decision to then bail out after getting the club relegated. You know you're not going to make that money back. You're not going to make the money back that that you've paid out to to get your stake in the club. Um, it'd be a significant loss, and and people like Tom Wagner don't deal in losses, do they? They, they deal in profits and you would presume that, well, you would hope that if that did happen, then that would just refocus them and their efforts in getting Birmingham City back into the championship because, you know, they've talked about, you know, getting into the Premier League. You know, you, you, need, to, you need to see this through. You can't then get relegated and, and cut your losses. That, that, that shouldn't be the way they work. And I don't think that will be the way they work. But until we've heard that from the horse's mouth, we won't know. Yeah, I've I've got to say, t- Tom Wag- Tom Wagner's face is just so all over this this um, uh, this Blues ownership group. You know, it's his name above the door. Mm. They're, they're not just talking about you know the championship, the, the football club. They're talking about re- uh, regenerating a an entire area, a, a city. Mm. Y- you know, yes, this would be a backward step, and it would be a big backward step. Just sort of throwing it in because I don't well, I don't want to belittle it, but throwing it in because the league have gone down, the team have gone down to League One. Yes, they certainly wouldn't have built that into their planning. I wouldn't have thought, but you don't get to be in Tom Wagner's position by not experiencing some adversity and and managing that adversity. Um, I'd I'd be stunned if. And I just, I just just don't think they would if they just said right that's it we're not we're not doing this anymore. Um, mm. I just just doesn't doesn't square with anything that I've I've heard coming from this in this uh, this lead this ownership group at all. Maybe Wagner will come on the podcast for us and uh, and clarify all this. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? He'd, he'd be very welcome. <laughs> yeah, he would. He would. Uh, I think that that clears everything up, doesn't it? With all the questions and things that we've had, uh, we tried to try to answer everyone's and and you know jumble some together that were quite similar. So if we haven't got round to your question, we do apologise. But please keep sending questions and takes in. Uh, they're a really big section of the usual podcast, or in today's case, its own podcast. Um, so we're very grateful. Um, so thank you from me. A thank you from Brian and also a big keep right on from both of us.